Welcome everybody to Cooking with Chef Brian. It's such a fun day today because I'm at the Park City Culinary Institute with a very dear friend and a brilliant chef, Ramses, here. And I'm so thrilled to be able to see what you're making here. It is bagels. I actually came to you and said, I want to show people how to make bagels. So let's show how to make bagels. What do you say? That'd be great. Tell me everything you've got here. So right now I've got, uh, flour, I've got water, flour, I've got sea salt. I've got uh, malt powder, which is the stuff you put to make uh, malted milkshakes, mm -hmm. and I've got my yeast. So it's basically five ingredients. What kind of yeast do you so, use in these? So I use instant yeast because, oh. um, because it activates a lot faster, and I know my bread is actually going somewhere. So there are, I like to eat, some recipes actually call for active dry yeast, and I mm -hmm. stick with that. But this one, instant yeast, is, I think is for modern times. It's mm -hmm. a little bit easier, and it gets uh, the dough going a little bit quicker. Awesome. What are we going to start with making first here? Because you've got quite a bit of a, a little production out here. What are we doing first? So what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called the sponge method. So this, right. will, this will kind of give our yeast a little bit of a kickstart. Mm -hmm. I always call it like you're giving it Rockstar or coffee or caffeine in the morning, mm -hmm. and it kind of gets it going really fast. So what I do is I take my bowl. So uh, I take my mixing bowl, the one that goes on the machine, mm -hmm. and I'm going to add in my water. So this is 21 ounces of uh, warm water. And warm being what? So anywhere between uh, 95 and 105 degrees. Okay. So what I say is, is uh, if it's too hot for you, it's too hot for the yeast. That's if true. It's too cold for you, it's too cold for the yeast. That's true. So I've got my 21 ounces of water, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'm going to add in all of my yeast. So it's two teaspoons of yeast. All right. And of course, the recipes you can go to cookingwithchefbrian.com and grab the recipes for our bagel making here. So two teaspoons of yeast, and then I'm also going to go through and add in any sugars. So some recipes for breads, they'll call for either granulated sugar, brown sugar, molasses, mm -hmm. or in this case, it's actually malt syrup or oh, malt powder. Right. So this also allows the yeast direct food. So I add in all of my yeast, all so of my I'm sugars. So I'm going to back up and say direct food. So when, when you see that no. recipes, what is direct food? What so, does that mean out there? Okay, so direct food for yeast is, this is how I explain it to my class. Uh -huh. So direct food is, is um, so it's uh, simple, simple sugars. All right. So honey, what I said before, honey, molasses, grain laid sugar, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, malt powder or malt, uh, malt syrup. And so indirect just, food okay. is, is uh, flour. Okay. So... When yeast, so for you and I, if uh, we want to have direct food, we go up to the apple tree and we pick the apple off the tree and we eat it. All right. Okay. So the yeast, that's what yeast does, is they look for all those sugars and they can eat, start digesting them and eating them immediately. So indirect food is like if we have to raise the cow, feed it, take it to the slaughterhouse, uh, um, then have to age it, a little work, and then. then have to cook it, and then have to eat it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what yeast does with flour. It, it takes a really long time for flour or yeast to kind of process the flour. All right, so we have water, malt powder, the yeast in there. Yep. What else are we going to have? So then? I have a total of four cups of flour here, but I'm only going to add enough of, uh, into here to make it a really thin, thin pancake-y batter. Oh, that's a good way to think of it. Yeah, so I, uh, me, for I do visual. So... I'll take my whisk, this is what I normally use, uh -huh. and I just go through and add in until it looks really thin. So when I, and if it's slightly a little bit thicker, I'm okay with that. And I don't have to whisk it until all of the flour is uh, completely homogenized. So I just want enough, and I'm gonna, this is all measured out, so I don't wanna make sure, I wanna make sure I, if I have any extra flour for my table, I have it in a completely separate. Okay. So I'm gonna mix this in. And it's not going to look like much. It's going to look kind of like a slurry. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. Oh, yeah? Yeah, right. Okay. And that's pretty much, like, really thin. But so that's that what pretty... you're doing. So it's just going to start to activate the yeast. It's going to feed it. It's going to multiply in there. Yes. Then this is going to go into the finished yes. dough, correct? Yeah. yeah. And I'll have the rest of my ingredients all ready to go. So... Again, visual. So I like to use visual. So the visual is, is um, yeast is like you and me. So, you know, we have a lifespan mm -hmm. and we take in food and we have a byproduct. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it takes in yeast, or I'm mean, sorry, it takes in sugars mm -hmm. and its byproduct is alcohol and CO2. Okay. So, and we cook off the alcohol and we trap the CO2. Okay. And, and that's then, what causes your lift yes. in the dough. So I'm going to keep just mixing a little bit more in. It doesn't have to be, there we go. 
Do it smells good. So I remember when I was a kid, mom would always make breads. That's, I think, why I have a passion for making breads, that smell of the yeast. Yes. Did your grandparents, your family make breads growing so up? So my grandmother used to make bread. She mm -hmm. was part of the, um, the World War II generation, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, she uh, didn't waste anything. No. So she would make bread every week. Um, yeah. And then she, we would let it dry out, and then we'd make breadcrumbs from whatever was left over. Sure, sure. So it's a really pancakey, thinny. It's very thin. It looks it looks like a very thin pancake dough. Yeah. So that's the that's yeah. the goal that we're trying to hit here now. How long does this sit? It's going to sit in a warm place for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. All right. And we've got a great little trick. You've got a trick with proofers in that. Because not all of you are going to have professional proofers like we have here in the, the professional kitchen. Now, you just added flour to cover the top? Yes. So what I did was I put flour over the top of it. So again, lifespan like the yeast mm -hmm. is uh, when you wake up in the morning and you're all wrapped up in your nice warm bed. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do with the yeast. We're going to keep it nice and warm. Okay. We're going to give it a blanket over the top. Oh, and that's it's a good way to see, think and of it's it. going to allow to proof. <laughs> so, is this all the flour the recipe has? So yes, this is. I might have to add a little bit more. But I mean, pretty much. Yeah. That's it. That's You're it. We're just going to mix that up here. Yeah. Salt. Is there salt in the recipe? So there is salt, but uh -huh. I don't want the salt to come in contact with the yeast because it'll kill it like a slug. So right. I don't know if you remember you when you were a kid and you used to pour. So some people never used to pour. Never. No, no, I do that. Never. So wink, never. Wink. So I would. Uh, so when you grow. So some people would pour salt over a slug, and you can kind of see a trick. That's what happens with yeast. Oh, that's interesting. So imagine if I dipped you into a giant salt bin, right? You wouldn't like it. I probably wouldn't like it at all. Here. So we're going to get this into the proofer. So don't go away because Chef here has got some great ideas for proofers for the home use um, that I think you're all going to have these little things available at your house that you can create these great little proofers here. The sponge is going. We come back. We're going to finish this up. So Chef, I'm very excited to get kind of hungry for some bagels here. Excellent. All That's right. Fun. Don't go away, everybody. We'll be right back. It's no secret, frozen rolls are fresher than bakery rolls. You see, bakery rolls are made in commercial bakeries. Then they sit all day in stores. Some even contain preservatives because rolls begin to stale immediately. By the time you eat your roll, it could already be days old. Rhodes Bake and Serve is found in your grocer's freezer. Simply take Rhodes frozen roll dough home and let it thaw and rise in a pan. Make Rhodes rolls in your own oven. Rhodes Bake and Serve, hot and fresh, right out of your oven. Monday at 10, two news shows you how scammers clone your voice to steal thousands. We can't trust our eyes and ears as much anymore. Exposing the next level of deep fake technology. If I can hear you easily, then it's easy to do. See how voice cloning puts words in your mouth and you may never know it. A, a lot of people are going to be victimized by this. And what you can do to protect yourself. This kind of technology is going to be in their face whether they like it or not. Monday on 2 News at 10. Hi guys, it's Misha here, and yes, I'm still loving my new Honda. You know, life is busy. It's busy mornings, it's full days, there's always something going on. I'm glad I can trust Honda safety features to keep my family safe while I'm driving, and the tech features to keep them entertained while out on the road. There's this, life is going to be busy, oh and this. I'm just glad we're busy driving a Honda. Wherever life takes you, a new Honda Civic from your Utah Honda dealers gets you there. Drive one today for only $189 a month. 3D weather on two news, helping you understand the weather headed your way. Welcome back, everybody, to Cooking with Chef Brian. I'm here with uh, Chef Ramsey. We're just kind of laughing because we both realize we're born in the same year, which I'm not going to reveal. Nope. It's our little secret. <laughs> my, my, my birthday's in May. Yours in May? Yep. Because I just had one. I know. I know. It's a good one. Happy birthday. And so thank you. This is the neatest thing. I love that you have created the proofing box for all of you at home so that you don't have to have the professional proof box that they do in the bake shops or in the schools. Right. Tell me about this. This is great. So Chef. this one this one kind of is a, it's an interesting conglomeration of uh, two different uh, proofings or uh, rise of dough. Okay. So what I do is, is that you take a box, an empty box, make sure it's big enough to fit uh, your whatever your product is, and then a small little pan of hot water. Oh, okay. And then, uh, so what you do is, is every 15, oh, there we go. Ding. Perfect timing. So every 15 minutes, I got to clear okay. it out because if I don't, there we go. So every 15 minutes, so what I do is, is you have a pot of boiling water <laughs> and you out. put the pot, put the pot back on the stove, uh -huh. bring that one up to a boil, take one carefully that's already boiling and you put it underneath and then you close it up and you set your timer for another 10 to 15 minutes. And you do this for about three or four times. So it uh -huh. could be up to about an hour. 
Wow, that's a great idea. Everybody can do that at home. And then, so. and then the other one is you can take your oven, you mm -hmm. turn your oven on to the lowest setting, the mm -hmm. lowest. It's usually now the oven temperatures can't go any lower than about 150 to 170. Okay. So I set my temperature really low, and then I take my bowl, and you put it in, and then you take a... Um, a dish towel or an oven mitt. Mm -hmm. Oven mitt is more uh, 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 heat proof. And you kind of put it in the lowest kind of crook like that. And just kind of keep it so it's and a warm it, environment. Yes. And I can keep it's a warm environment, so it's too hot. If it's too hot for the yeast, you'll actually kill it. Right. And if it's too cool, you're going to be here for five hours proofing your dough, and you don't want to do that. Wow. So I've what I that. the nice thing is, is I can pull the bowl out. And or my bread, and I can keep a close eye on it. And so, see how it's going. Yeah, this one you're going to check every 15 or 20 minutes. And, then, and I can see the pot over there boiling, yeah. still the steam coming yes. off of it. So make sure it's a heat-safe counter yes. that you have it on. Yeah, so you can put it on a trivet or put it on another oven mitt. All right. So now this dough has proofed. It's ready to finish up here, correct? Yes, so it's ready to finish up. What we've done is... Um, we've kind of given it a little bit of a kickstart. So if you want to describe what it looks like on top. Well, it, it, it just Our, has that little blanket of the flour that we put on there, and it's going to get mixed up here. It's very yep. bubbly. It's very poolish looking to me. Yeah. So, so I, I was And called, very aromatic. Very aromatic. Mm -hmm. I kind of look like it. It kind of reminds me of the San Andreas Fall. It's very... Um, earthquake -y, So it's kind well, of broke you, through. I haven't been to the San Andreas <laughs> Fall yet. <laughs> So it's kind of it kind of breaks through the flour barrier that you put over the top. Mm -hmm. So I know that the yeast is now activated. Oh, it's good. Which is good for me because I don't want to get to the point when I'm trying to rise my bread, the final uh, loaf, and then find out that my yeast is dead because it's too old. We've all done that. I'll be honest. You've done that, haven't you? No, because I do this. So every I, single time, every even single when time. you were little. Nah, little. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Ah, I it's knew happened, I could find it. Happened, it. it happened once, <laughs> once or twice. So now what I do is I just take all, oh, almost all of my flour. I, use, I save a little bit. Um, and the reason I do is because if, so if, the, um, if the humidity outside is very uh, wet, then what's going to happen is, is that the flour absorbs moisture based on the outside and te temperature. And they there are outside humidity. There. So if it's really wa rainy... Your flour is going to be a little bit more wetter, so I, I, don't, I don't add all of it in. Okay. I'm going to switch sides with okay. you here, Chef, so Great. that you have the access there. So then what I do is I take my salt, and I pour it directly on top of the flour I just mm -hmm. added on it. So there's no contact between the salt and the yeast. Okay. So no direct, direct contact. And, and then, did you add a little more malted powder? Just a little bit more to kind of give it more of a kickstart, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of, it is, all of the malt powder is in, and I just kind of... It's kind of nice because it gives a little bit of a sweetness to the dough. Oh, yeah. I love malt yeah. powder. And then I'm going to turn the machine on. And I usually do it on speed, either stir or one. Uh -huh. And then I allow all the flour to eventually be absorbed. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to turn it on 10 because then what happens is you have to clean up all this flour all off your table. And, yes, that has happened. So <laughs> I'm laughing, it happens Jeff, because every... it's happened many times. On live television, yeah, it has yeah. happened to me. So I always make sure, one, I always make sure that... <laughs> It's turned off before you plug it in, right? And before you, put the, and before you put the bowl on, too. So I'm going to allow this to kind of, uh, and, and it's called, the term is called take up. Okay. So that's when the, the water takes up all of the flour. That's awesome. And the other thing is, is as you're mixing the dough, you give it about four minute intervals. So mm -hmm. I'm going to mix this for about four minutes. And if nothing has changed, like the dough hasn't come together or it hasn't become stretchy, or then you have to do something to change the matter of the dough, either by adding more water, because okay. you didn't have enough, or you add more flour. Okay. So, and then I do that for four minutes, and then what I do is, is I give it another four minutes after I do the change. Add more water, or add more flour, give it four more minutes, and then your bread is only mixed for about eight minutes total. Okay, well we're gonna keep letting this mix here. When we come back, we're gonna pull it out, shake the bagels, get them poached, so that we're gonna have some delicious, I'm gonna call them New York style bagels. Yeah, Jeff, how's that? they're New York style bagels. <laughs> Don't go away. Because we weld here, commerce runs smoothly here. Because we mold materials here, we ensure success here. Because we drive here, we propel business here. And because we fabricate here, we foster a better outcome here. At the new SLCC West Point campus, 
we not only improve careers, we improve our world. Hot like fire in our CRV. It's a smooth ride, that's guaranteed. The hype is real for all wheel drive. Road trips cruising, can't wait to arrive. Honda, yeah, it's so cool. I'm so fly when I drive it around all over the place. Mom, that doesn't rhyme. Oh, that's what we're doing? You're so old. For a low monthly payment on your CRV, Utah Honda Dealers is the place to be. All wheel drive in a ride so fine. The CRV is only $259. What? what? Only $259. To Honda dealers. The inversion. When the air turns terrible, it impacts your health. Only Two News has the weather tools to help you breathe easier. The Two News This Morning Planning Bar is on screen all morning long, even during commercials. So you'll always be able to see when the next air clearing storm is on the way. Our exclusive Two News 3D weather breaks down the science behind the bad air and what it's going to take to clear it out. When the inversion builds this winter, tune in to Two News said they should go to a different Sorry. school. Two news beyond the book's investigations. What are your thoughts about that? Holding Utah schools accountable. But could we talk to you? From how your education dollars are being spent. Yeah, can we talk to you? All we want to know is just where some of that money goes. So you don't necessarily look at how they spend their money. To the safety of your child's school lunch. How do you suppose that that could continue to happen? We had a cleanliness issue. Our Beyond the Books investigations are already making a difference, but there's still more to come. Get the weather on screen all the time with the 2 News This Morning Planning Bar. Well, it is all about bagels today, and I'm so happy to be with Chef Ramsey here. He is one of the uh, culinary instructors here at the yes. Park City Institute. You teach the cuisine courses, yes, the certification sir. ones. Yes. It's amazing. He's and a the baking chef. pastry. And the baking pastry mm -hmm. ones. You do them all. I met you years ago yeah. uh, in, in another school that you were teaching at, and so you have a lot of experience yes. in all of this. And if you have ever wondered... How to do a cooking certification? Well, just call them here at Park City Culinary Institute. They will certainly be able to help you through and walk you through all of those. We have been shaping bagels right now, and you wanted to show me a technique that you use to shape bagels, and then I'm very excited to show you a technique yes. I learned in New York mm -hmm. on bagels. So how do we do this, Chef? So what you do is, so we've divided the dough into 70, seven equal pieces for this, uh, this recipe. Okay. And what I do is I take the dough and I kind of all it up just lightly, right, like that. I'm gonna grab one and, and yeah. work with you. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So just ball it up lightly. Okay. So we don't want it to, and then lightly press it into a disc. Okay. And then I pick the dough up and I start rolling the edge in. So you roll oh, okay. your fingers in like this. So it'll eventually look like kind of a frisbee, like a mini frisbee. And you just keep, and I use both hands, so I'm rolling. That, I'm not going to lie, that's going to take a little bit it, to get used to. Yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to. Um, your forearms get a little bit of a workout. So you can see how my, yeah, yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah, and you just keep uh, spinning the disc in your hand. I want you to be sure to see that. You can see it's kind of rolling yep. in on its side. There you go, that's good. And this will eventually, the center will get thinner, mm -hmm. and you'll bust through it. So I'm, my index finger is kind of pushing up lightly. It's like a mini pizza. So you can That's see it getting more dough is on the edges and less dough in the middle. And then you take your index finger and eventually, it see how it's thinner pokes. and thinner? Oh, yeah, see, mine just came through. Yeah. So it just pokes right through. And then as you keep pulling, you just rotate the seam, which is now a seam. Uh huh. And you take the seam and you rotate it, and then you turn it over and you put seam side down. And then if you want a big bagel, where you want a bagel so when it proofs, this will proof out, mm -hmm. and this will proof in. Okay. So if you want a bagel where you make a sandwich, you don't make the hole so big. Oh, that's true. And it'll that's proof true. shut. I love bagel sandwiches. Yes. Locks. And, mm. So we've made a couple shapes over here where some of them are a little bit smaller, because so I want those to close up. Got the hole here. Yep, and if you want it bigger, then you put your thumbs in it and you make it really big. And if you accentuate the center, then this will proof a little bit closed. And this will proof out and you'll have a nice 
Uh, standard bagel, if that's what you want to call it, non-sandwich. Delicious bagel. Yep. That's what I'm going to call Delicious. it. Delicious. Okay. So I wanted to show you really quick. When I was in New York, I had a bagelry guy show me how, and they had a table this big full of dough, and they were just using a bench scrape and would cut out portions. And what they did, and you know this already. Yeah. But I, I don't know. So it's I like styles. this way because, as you said, after you go to all that work making the dough, you don't want it to, un to un undo. undo. So they would roll a rope just like this, take it, wrap it around the back side of their hand, touch the two dough pieces together here, roll that a little bit more so it's a little more pronounced, wrap it around, touch that, and then just kind of smash mm -hmm. and connect those two doughs. And that's... That's it. That's what they would do for their bagels. And so you have a little flour on there. Yep. Is that what you're doing? So you put a little bit of flour on your sheet pan so the dough doesn't stick. Because mm -hmm. eventually what will happen is as the bagels start to proof, they'll adhere to the parchment. And then when you uh -huh. try to uh, go to the next stage, you won't be able to pull them away so from the parchment. So how long does this proof at this, this stage? Is gonna, this is going to take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. So it is a little bit longer. So also I like to do, I don't like the dough to dry out. Mm -hmm. So I will always take either a little bit of butter, oil, mm -hmm. but I would use the spray because it's easy. Oh, yeah, and just much easier. Hit, yeah, it's just much easier. Hit them with a little bit of spray, and this will keep them from drying out. Um, if they start to dry out, then the dough will crack as it's proofing, and I don't want to do don't that. Don't want to do that? No, no, no. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take these, and we're going to come over to our makeshift. The box over there? Yep, our box. We have our makeshift proofer, mm -hmm. and I've got my, so I'm going to put it over. Uh, by the box, I take my hot water, and then I'm going to go through, do that, set a timer. And here's for your about, timer. Yep, set my timer I'll for about. I'll grab that for you. Set my timer for about 15 minutes, and then this is going to take four four times. All right. So 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes you can set it for 30 minutes at a time, and then okay. you only have to check them t two or three times. We're going to get cooking off these bagels here. When we come back, it's poaching and baking them off. It's all about bagels when we come back. At Papa Murphy's, we're making flavor magic for just $8. Introducing the new Combo Magnifico, a magical combination of giant pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, and onions, all for just $8. Bake it yourself, then make it disappear. We make it, you bake it, Papa Murphy's. Oh my gosh, wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms. Take action with our Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. Try it today for only $14.95 plus get free shipping. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Hi guys, it's Misha here, and yes, I'm still loving my new Honda. You know, life is busy. It's busy mornings. It's full days. There's always something going on. I'm glad I can trust Honda safety features to keep my family safe while I'm driving and the tech features to keep them entertained while out on the road. There's this. Life is going to be busy. Oh, and this. I'm just glad we're busy driving a Honda. Wherever life takes you, a new Honda CRV from your Utah Honda dealers gets you there. Drive one today. Now only $2.59 a month. As an equal opportunity employer, KUTV provides broad outreach regarding job vacancies. We seek the help of local organizations in referring qualified applicants. For more information, contact KUTV Human Resources. Take two from Two News. This is the podcast where we confront today's most pressing local and national issues. Party is not how I'm going to define my point of view. There are things that we can do, practical things that we could all agree on. This is Take Two. Subscribe today. The inversion. When the air turns terrible, it impacts your health. Only Two News has the weather tools to help you breathe easier. The Two News This Morning planning bar is on screen all morning long, even during commercials. So you'll always be able to see when the next air clearing storm is on the way. Our exclusive Two News 3D weather breaks down the science behind the bad air and what it's going to take to clear it out. When the inversion builds this winter, tune in to Two News. Love is in the air. to be spending my Valentine's Day with all of you, and I'd like to know what you got me. What do you want? <laughs> Ellen, weekdays at 3 p.m. on KUTV. Watch Fresh Living, weekdays at 1 p.m. on KUTV2. Chef, we're finishing up here. Now, we've got to this stage here. Tell me how we got to here. What did we do after they came out of the proof box? So after they rose, we wanted to proof, or wanted to let them rise about what, uh, double 
feels but like... But manageable still, though. They still need to be yeah. manageable because we need to poach them. And once it goes into the poaching liquid, yes. for every gallon, how much baking soda did you put in and honey? So it was one tablespoon of honey and one teaspoon of baking soda for every gallon that you're going to poach it off poaching. of. When we poach them, how long on each side? 15 seconds on each side. That's it? Yeah. Oh, that's really short. And then when they come out, put them on cornmeal. Uh-huh. Or spray your uh, sheet pan, spray okay. really well. Put them, uh, again, face up, and then finish them with whatever you want. 475. 475. For 8 to 10 minutes. 8 to 10 minutes till they're golden brown. You golden can put brown. any kind of toppings you want on yep. them. He did the everything for me because I love the everything, which has everything you can imagine on it, from cheese to cinnamon and sugar. Yes. Correct? Yep. Let's cut that one open and take a look at it. And while you're cutting that, I noticed that you had your Instarete thermometer out. You were testing the temperature inside of... The bagel. Yes. So you want a minimum temperature should be 190 degrees, but uh -huh. 195 is, is perfect. So if you have an instant read, you can always use it. Okay. So it's a really good gauge, but 8 to 10 minutes, nice and golden brown. You can also pick them up, and you look at the bottoms of them, and they'll be lightly oh. golden brown. Show that right over to that camera there and let them take a look at that. That's a great, great way to see that. Yep. So when you're doing these, I see a lot of recipes that have egg washes. Do you ever put egg wash on them? If you... Ooh, uh, the crispiness, that sounds really good. If you, uh, you can if you're not going to put anything on them. But okay. if you're going to have put, put something on them, you want them to come out of the approaching liquid and while they're still wet, okay. that's what will allow the stuff to adhere now, to I notice it. you kind of just sprinkle it on, pour it on, you didn't take and go plunk, like no. they do in New York, just clunk. They can do it like that. You can You're do very you good. I'm very meticulous. At but what I did do. put a lot of cheese on it. I know. Thank you. That yeah. was more from my doing here. <laughs> well, of course, you can head on over to cookingwithchefbrian.com. You can grab all of these recipes as well as many, many others. Of course, Chef Ramsey here at the Park City Culinary Institute. If you're wondering, you want to take some culinary classes to certify, you can always call them on the phone uh, to get any more information. And I'm very excited because I'm actually joining the teaching force here and teaching the recreational yes. classes. So you can come join the recreational classes, go to their website, of course, and find out all of that information. Once again, the website is cookingwithchefbrian.com. Head on over there, grab the recipe. Thank you so much, Chef. It's always a pleasure. If you have any questions. This. If I have any questions, of course, you know, I, here, here's my go-to that I'm going to go to here. And I'm curious, what's your favorite bagel topping? Cheese. Cheese. Cheese is really good. Any kind of cheese? And, well, most of the oh, cheddar well, cheese, and cheese. then I always like the jalapeno. That's always nice. Well, I steer clear of the jalapenos because, yeah. you know, I have this little silly allergy to them, so that doesn't matter as much as that. But I love the variety of them. Bagels are one of those wonderful things that you can do at home. Put some locks on there. They're delicious, too, with a little cream cheese. I feel like you're in New York. Yes. Thank you, Chef, so much. You what a pleasure. I can't wait to dig it. Well, I'm already digging it. I'll see you next time. You can find all of these complete recipes on my website, cookingwithchefbrian.com. 